Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab, and today we've got what seems like yet another in a never-ending supply of Synology NASs, but fear not, this is the last one in our current batch of Synology reviews, which means it's time to go bang, bang on some doors, rough some people up, get another stack of these bad boys in here. Or a 10 gig card. 10 gig card too, and they announced some new stuff too, so Synology's got a number of accessories that go with these NASs. Uh, ranging from the 10 gig card with two SSDs on it uh, that enable caching for some of the older ones like this 18, uh, 19 plus here. Um, also new 10 and 40 gig cards and all sorts of other goodies. We've come here to not talk about those today. We are talking about the 1821 plus. This fellow eight drives supports two of the DX517 expansion units for a total of 18 which is what the 18 part means, right? Yes. 21 being the blackjack? No, the generation. Ah, okay. But really, it comes down to you have a faster CPU, so you're using uh, AMD Ryzen instead of Intel on the uh, previous generation. Adam on that guy, right? You gain uh, 0.1 gigahertz, uh, but you go from a 4-thread um, system to an 8-thread system, thread system on this guy, and then onboard um, cache module slots or the other one you need the expansion card to add. Them. Right, so this guy's got, I think we have still hard, hard drives in here, so uh, 14 terabyte reds. I won't take them all out, but to Kevin's point, on the inside of this, if you pull out a couple bays, you can access the two SSD slots inside, which give you NVMe caching if you're so inclined. Yeah. And as we've seen, those uh, caching drives can give the hard drives and certain workloads a big boost in performance. And on the back, it's got a expansion slot where you could put a 10 gig card if you wanted, or the four gig ports on, on board. Yeah, although one nuance that we did notice is the uh, 10 gig card with the cache modules on it. We tried that to add 10 gig onto this platform, but it, did not, uh, it was not visible, so. It's also not supported. Yeah, it was. We were kind of assuming that it might be, but uh, Synology does seem to be clamping down with more whitelisting these days on supported drives, uh, and even a lot of the uh, non-branded uh, cache modules. Uh, if you don't go with the Synology drives, will g uh, give you a warning if they're not on the compatibility list. Well, I don't know what it would do if you had four SSD bays in there, the NVMe bay bays, because it's not in these tower form factors that nothing more than two has ever been used before for cache well in the uh, configuration tool actually i think it shows you uh, raid one uh raid zero and a raid five option that's always grayed out because there's no more than two uh, visible discs but They're probably more for the rack stations oh, yeah yeah true might use something like that anyway we can speculate all day long what you care about are the the performance numbers most likely so let's take a look at what we've got going on here and we did do a quick breakdown in specs just to show what changes from the 1819 uh, plus to the 1821 plus. So this is the prior gen to Kevin's point before. It runs an Atom quad core uh, 2.1 gigahertz uh, CPU, but it's quad core four thread, which is an important distinction. Yeah, and then you have uh, the same support with um, the number of drives, the number of cache drives, uh, although with, depending on the uh, uh, card included. Uh, and then you're still limited to uh, four one gig ports on board, which to go up to anything fast, you have to get an add-on card to expand that. Right, so let's look at the 21. So now here in this version, we go to the Ryzen uh, V1500B quad core still 2.2, you get 0.1 more gigahertz, but you get, it's not well captured on the spec sheet, but you get eight threads instead of four. Yeah, which can have some benefits. Uh, we looked into uh, Virtual Machine Manager recently, and moving on to uh, VCP allocation, having additional threads available is pretty important. Yeah, so if you're gonna get into any of the advanced features, running more apps, running more stuff, those threads will come in handy. Definitely. Uh, same RAM uh, situation, four gigs going, again, going to be fine for most file share and light application usage. If you get into the virtual machine manager or some of the more uh, advanced applications, you're going to run out of RAM relatively quickly. Um, 10 gig support in that, uh, that by eight slot, uh, which is also nice to have. Is this the point where we make the obligatory complaint over support for two and a half or five or 10 gig on board? Um, yeah, I, th I mean, this model you're looking at, uh, was it around a, uh, 
maybe a thousand or so mm -hmm. on its uh, average price. At that range, 10 gig is starting to be included on a lot of the competing models. Uh, yes, there may not be the need for it, depending on if you're using a lot of local resources with a virtualization manager, but there are certain areas where 10 gig out is incredibly beneficial. Having one of those multi-port guys on the back would just be super handy. Yeah. And I mean, you can get there with a the card, but if you don't have to, uh, all the better. So let's take a look at performance. What did we run for this? You ran some SSDs and hard drives? Yeah, we were using the uh, Samsung SM863 uh, 960 gigabyte uh, SSDs, eight of them in RAID 6, as well as eight uh, WD Red 14 terabyte uh, NAS hard drives. And you only did quad one gig, right? Yes. So we didn't even use the 10 gig port. And some interesting results here. You can go over some of the highlights, but um, also, a, also just reference broadly, even though it's a different test plan, uh, what you did on the uh, 1819 plus. And so on the 1819, we were using the uh, Toshiba N300 uh, eight terabyte SSD, or eight terabyte uh, NAS hard drives. And then the uh, Toshiba, I believe it was the HK3R2 960. And uh, one surprising element is even that guy on uh, RAID, uh, still using RAID 6 and uh, having 10 gig on that platform, we were able to get almost twice the uh, 4K uh, throughput. So there's, and that was on uh, the peak, uh, peak one, oh, one of the peak benchmarks in that uh, right. test. Uh, but we're able to see much higher performance, and those are you can have benefits on newer uh, revs of uh, DSM, uh, probably benefits on the SSDs themselves, but a little bit on the CPU too. It was pretty nice to see higher performance. Okay, cool. So what do we have here that stands out of the the highlights? Uh, so overall, you're going to get a lot better performance on uh, SSDs and wheel hard drives, but it is nice to know that uh, loaded up the hard drives, you can get around 4,000 IOPS uh, over iSCSI on the read side, uh, and then when you move over to a flash, uh, iSCSI goes up to around 100,000 IOPS. Uh, write uh, is limited to around 38,000 IOPS for both uh, SMB and iSCSI for uh, flash, and we saw about 1,500 IOPS for uh, the hard drives. So on the right performance for both uh, SMB and iSCSI, that's pretty close to just your limit on the four gig ports, or no, are you that's going to be SSD limits. It's more of the SSD limits, okay? Because uh, you will see some uh, DRAM caching elements that get brought through, uh, and that's you're just seeing more of what the uh, software limitation is and uh, overhead associated with those items. Okay. Uh, AK7030 throughput. Um, SMB on the uh, flash came in around 15,000 IOPS, and then uh, iSCSI topped out just under 50,000 IOPS. So overall, pretty good performance if you're running applications on this. Yeah, it's funny because uh, we just had someone hit us up on uh, Reddit or something, I think recently, that was asking about a small business that had five people in the office, and they needed a server to collect files. And what he didn't know what he was asking for was really a NAS. Uh, to make it really easy because he's not an IT guy, just wants something simple. I mean, that's where these things really excel, whether it's this or QNAP or you know, some other packaged NAS that has the applications to go with it. And you just throw the drives in, find it, and set them up. They're dead simple. Yeah, now they're almost like a small, affordable, hyper-converged appliance as you look at the applications you can run on it itself, besides doing well, yeah. iSCSI out to another server. So if you think about the old days of, of setting up a server, putting Windows on it, and setting up storage shares, you can do all that on a Windows server, but the investment for that server is way more. If You're almost going to spend the number, uh, the cost on licensing is what the, yeah, this unit might cost. That may be, too. Uh, but from a simplicity and ease of use and deployments, so when you look at some of these numbers and, and you just think about Okay, what does this mean? Well, it means that if you have a number of users hitting this thing, that you're going to be able to uh, to support those needs. Yeah, and then if you decide to separate between some amount of flash and some amount of hard drive, what's nice is you're, the user's impacting that uh, random access on the uh, flash is going to have no bearing on the, uh, the hard drive side, and that hard drive side is going to handle sequential streams just fine. Right. And with eight bays, you've got plenty of room to do a big group of hard drives and still a little group of SSDs. Yeah, without even looking at the expansion shelf. Right. Okay. So on 8K sequential, uh, again, this topped out around 56,000, 57,000 IOPS. A great equalizer for flash. Yeah. And the surprising thing is our um, 1819 Plus topped out around the same range. So it's 
probably coming close to uh, CPU, just overhead limits. Um, but uh, across the board, you're not going to see huge difference between um, the flash and hard drives for sequential workloads. Well, the CPU is a fair point, though, too, because even though it's a Ryzen CPU, it's new to this particular uh, chassis family. But is isn't new entirely compared to its release date. Right. So it's an older CPU. It came out in 2018, I think. So it's not like it's brand new. But the thing that you've got to consider is could Synology put a, a higher power CPU in here? Absolutely would the thing be a grand at that point? Not even close. So there's a balance between enough performance, cost, then thermals and everything else that go into it. Well, it's also important to realize that a lot of these uh, NAS vendors are looking at not just what's the highest performance, but what performs well, or what performs well over time, what has fewer bugs. I mean, a lot of the NAS vendors got bit by the Intel Atom bug that uh, came out uh, a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. And you really want to know and understand the platform. If it meets the performance goals, why change it if it doesn't really impact other areas? Right. Okay, so what else do we have left on performance? Our last metric is uh, our 128K uh, sequential read and write workload. And again, this is an area where the 1819 Plus on our 10 gig card got a lot higher. This guy on the other hand, since we were not able to test over 10 gig, uh, topped at around 463 uh, megabytes per second. And it's still pretty darn impressive. Yeah, and this is over uh, four one gig ports. So and again, this is another area where you're not gonna see huge uh, difference between uh, flash and hard drive. But uh, again, you're it also depends on how many sequential streams you're going to run at it. So overall, we've got the 1621 plus here. We've got the old one. We've got the uh, 1819. We've got the 1821 plus. This guy really just gives you a couple more ports or a couple more ports, a couple more drive bays over this guy. You're not going to, and that's this is one area in performance. Um, the six bay actually had a slight edge using the exact same drives, but in smaller disk groups than the eight bay. And okay. so that might come into uh, CPU limits or just overhead on uh, software. But realistically, it's gonna it's gonna be roughly identical performance across all the workloads with the same components. You're just gonna get maybe uh, room for a hot spare or something if you need those additional bays. Right, so that's the trick is with those two additional bays, then you get a little more flexibility. You could use smaller capacity drives maybe if you need to save a little there or want more volume of drives to get more spindles or more redundancy or whatever, yeah. or the flash volume alongside the hard drive volume in addition to the cache maybe if you want to do that. So the 8 just really buys you more flexibility, uh, but from a capability standpoint, th most of the stuff in the Plus line is going to have uh, similar performance capabilities, just uh, the builds on the, uh, the number of drives. This guy is pretty cool. I would recommend more RAM though, if you're going to certainly run if the virtualization, um, option if you're going to run more stuff because it's bigger and maybe you have more users uh, stepping up to uh, additional RAM would go a long way to help and we're going to avoid going through DSM on this one mostly because it's unplugged sitting on the table but we've done that with the last couple of these and we've done walkthroughs on uh, snapshots how that works and we've done a walkthrough on the virtualization manager so check those out if you want to see a little bit more about the capabilities of, of DSM and some of the additional packages. But for a, a large form factor tower, I don't know, what, what even category do you put this in? Uh, desktop tower, maybe desktop footprint. Yes, 8-bay desktop tower footprint uh, from Synology. It's a nice little unit. We would love to see Synology move up on the networking side, but you know, it, for what it is, it does well. It's got the PCIe expansion slot. If you want faster interconnect and, and uh, have the budget to add that, uh, so that's it. Anything else? No, it's it's uh, it's a really nice platform. All right, so check it out, and uh, thanks for tuning into the review.